Okay, so welcome back once again, everyone. And uh, I hope uh, you're enjoying this study on the prophetic. We have just seen the introduction and we've also gone over the various incidents of uh, the prophetic and, um, uh, you know, not just incidents, but uh, insights from the Old Testament about the prophetic anointing. So in the last class, we saw how uh, there were different expressions used to describe um, the experience of various prophets in the Old Testament and how God laid his word on their hearts and how they ministered God's word. So today we are going to do a survey of the New Testament and then, you know, move on from there and uh, build on how we can move in the uh, prophetic anointing, you know, sooner, uh, like in, in maybe in about um, five or five, five or six classes, we should be getting into learning, you know, how each one of us can move uh, in the prophetic anointing. So that's, that is, we are going to take more time on that. Uh, I'm just trying to build the foundation and uh, share some of the key concepts about the prophetic anointing before us and so you know you might find that uh, from today i uh, go a little bit faster you know it's we don't have the time to cover every line and sentence uh, in our books but the key thoughts i will share with us and i encourage you to go back and read from uh, our publication on the uh, publication called understanding the prophetic okay you can find it in uh, the apc uh, publications online okay so uh, i'm on page number three uh, sorry page number 57 and chapter number three prophetic ministry in the new testament uh, we've been here with the life of john the baptist now john the baptist you know he uh, was called he is known as uh, the greatest of the old testament prophets and it is said about him that he came in the spirit and the power of elijah okay now we might ask the question why is it that john the baptist uh, is uh, said to be associated with the elijah anointing well elijah in many ways was a forerunner okay he was a forerunner and uh, uh, the prophetic came through very powerfully through his life and god accomplished you know various things through that prophetic anointing and in the same way when you compare the life of john the baptist we know that he prayed you know, he he uh, was the one proclaiming the preparation for the way of Jesus. So he was saying that, you know, prepare the way for the Lord. And he had that preparation or the forerunner anointing upon him, which is why both of them are associated. So uh, this also helps us understand that the anointings are transferable across generations. And we've, we've seen that, you know, we've studied about that in the previous section. So John the Baptist is the first one that we talk about uh, in the uh, New Testament. Uh, and when you study the life of John the Baptist, you know, he uh, was very, he, you would say that this individual is a very unlikely based on the description that you have about him. You know, he wasn't going around saying, thus says the Lord or, um, uh, you know, the, uh, all of that. But still, you know, God had placed his prophetic anointing upon him. And the main thing that the prophetic anointing accomplished is the preparation of the way for the Messiah. So he came before the Messiah and he proclaimed and, uh, uh, you know, invited people to repent and be ready for the ready to receive the work of the messiah so that's what john the baptist did now uh, as we continue on in the new testament we study a lot uh, about the life of our lord jesus christ you know and uh, the beautiful thing about the lord jesus is uh, in uh, where is this uh, i think it's john 3 you you read there that he had the spirit without measure Okay, uh, spirit without measure. I'm missing the reference. Let me quickly share that reference with that. Uh, the correct one. Okay, 
Yeah. It's, it's a little slow here. So let me see. Oh, yeah, hopefully it'll come through. Yeah, John 3. John 3 and verse 34. Uh, this verse says, For he whom God hath sent, uh, speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. Okay. So uh, the way we understand this is, the Lord Jesus carried the anointing of the fivefold offices. Okay. So no one human being can have the anointing of all the fivefold ministry offices. You may find somebody who's in the role of an apostle and a teacher. So there are combinations of that anointing, but nowhere do you see a single individual with all the anointings. But Jesus, you know, uh, in Hebrews, um, Hebrews 3, uh, I think it's uh, verse 1, you read that, like, he, he is the apostle, right? He is the apostle uh, uh, and the high priest of our confession. So the apostolic. He is the apostle. We we are told that. Obviously, we know that he was a great teacher of God's word. He was the word himself. So uh, he had the teaching anointing. He also is a prophet. Okay. Uh, and he carried that prophetic anointing on him. And similarly, the other um, uh, capacities of the fivefold anointing, everything rested upon the Lord Jesus. And that's where we see that the spirit upon his life was without measure. And talking about the prophetic anointing, you know, Jesus, uh, in, in a couple of places, you, you don't really, again, see him uh, saying, thus says the Lord or things like that. But there are references where, uh, uh, like in the Old Testament, Moses had said that God is going to raise up a prophet like me. Who was he referring to? He was referring to Jesus. And then again, uh, Jesus about talking about himself in Luke 4, 24. You know, he makes this statement. He says, no prophet is accepted in his own country. So what is he saying? Talking about himself, he's saying that he's a prophet. Uh, so definitely, you know, he was a prophet. When he raised up the dead son of uh, the lady from nine, uh, even then, you know, people rejoice. They say a great prophet has risen up among us. So the Lord Jesus definitely carried, demonstrated the prophetic anointing and in its, uh, you know, the, the, the greatest grace uh, that that is available in the prophetic office, you know, at in that extent, he demonstrated the prophetic anointing. Now, when we continue to, um, you know, study about his life and uh, ask the question, what exactly did this prophetic anointing do? We see that he was able to reveal the hearts of people. You know, do you recall when um, people came against him, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they said something, but they thought something else. And Jesus was able to point it out and tell them, I know what you're thinking right now. And, you know, uh, that was through the prophetic anointing. We also see that he was able to reveal the true character and potential of people. For example, Nathaniel. You know, Nathaniel, when Jesus found him, he said, hey, here is a man without guile. Or here is uh, a very um, clean, this man has a clean heart. How would one know? You know, whether someone has a clean heart or not. To, so to look into the character of a, of a person it was possible through the prophetic anointing. So in this manner, the prophetic anointing was uh, rested upon Jesus. And um, you know, there were many demonstrations, powerful demonstrations of the anointing as he went about healing people and um, uh, working miracles in their lives. Uh, and. Matthew 24, 25, uh, those passages talk about the end times, the things that are going to um, unfold on the earth. And the Lord Jesus was the one who revealed it 
to us. How is it possible? Through the prophetic anointing. So the Lord Jesus himself functioned in the prophetic anointing and at the level of a prophet. Now, as we move further in the New Testament, we come to the age of the early church. And over there, we see the rising of 12 apostles. Okay, And as we study about these apostles and the activities they were engaged in, you know, we, we uh, recognize that you know, the prophetic was flowing among them as well. We more specifically read about the emergence of certain prophets. Um, and later on, you know, in Acts chapter 11, when the uh, church of Antioch is set up, um, this set of, you know, a prophetic team from Jerusalem is sent to Antioch to just help you know, in the spiritual development and growth of the church. And one particular prophet who was sent was Agabus. And, um, you know, soon after this team went to the church of Antioch, in just a matter of, let's say, two or three years, you find that the the church of Antioch really uh, began to grow in the things of God and, um, you know, the, the work of God was activated in a powerful way. And you could say that there was a powerful impartation and stirring up of the prophetic in the lives of the people in the church of Antioch. Okay, so that is something we study. And later on, you know, uh, we, we see how God speaks and ministers to people in Acts 13 as the leadership of the church of Antioch are praying. Okay, they hear from God. You know, God speaks to them and tells them, uh, you set aside for me Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have for them. So uh, there are people commissioned into a ministry of missions as the leadership of Antioch hears from God. So, you know, all this is the prophetic uh, in the New Testament for us. And we continue from there. We continue from there. Uh, and, uh, you know, we see how the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of the people uh, in the early church. You know, later on, uh, sometime you uh, study about God's wisdom upon the leadership of in the Jerusalem church uh, and Paul and Barnabas go over to the Jerusalem church in Acts chapter 15, they uh, have to make a decision you know, regarding uh, customs that people from a non-Jewish background need to follow uh, in order for them to fully uh, experience and walk in the, in the life of salvation. And, you know, they come up with the decision that all Jewish customs need not be followed for salvation. So if one believes in the Lord Jesus, that is fine. Uh, and uh, they also uh, uh, they also tell the Gentiles to stay away from certain practices that dishonor God. So even at that time, you know, it is really God speaking to them, the Holy Spirit moving upon their hearts to bring the right word of God. Now, later on, when we talk about the office of a prophet, you know, we will see that presenting directives of this kind, you know, which is leading the uh, leading large parts of the body of Christ or giving direction to the entire body of Christ. Okay. So that is part of the prophetic anointing uh, from the prophetic office. So we see these things unfold. There are names of people like uh, Judas and Silas also as part of the new uh, the early church team who were prophets. They exhorted the people. They strengthened the brethren. Um, uh, you know, they they brought encouragement to the prophetic ministry. And as we continue on, you know, we see that Paul had four, uh, sorry, Philip had four daughters and all these four daughters prophesied. So, you know, uh, these are all people who uh, were releasing the prophetic anointing. And of course, there's a lot more about Agabus, about how he prophesied uh, regarding an impending famine. Uh, and uh, this prophecy helped the church plan and raise funds to um, help people 
who would be in need at the time of the famine. So Agabus gave that that uh, very important prophecy. And not just that, uh, Agabus was also instrumental in confirming uh, what God had already spoken to Paul. So Paul knew, you know, Paul knew that, you know, chains and the tribulations await me you know, wherever I, I'm going to go. He knew uh, later on in his journey that he's going to be uh, taken into prison and come under trial, but still he was moving in the direction, he was moving towards Jerusalem. And at that time, Agabus comes and, you know, he um, uh, does this whole prophetic act where he takes Paul's belt, he ties himself. Uh, I think this is in Acts uh, 21, where he says that, you know, th the man uh, whose belt this is will be bound in this way. So Paul already knew, God had already spoken to him. Uh, and yet, you know, Agabus was there reconfirming that Paul is going to go through a great time of trial and tribulation. So in this manner, we see uh, the, uh, uh, the the prophetic and prophecies ministering uh, the lives of the people. Now, as we study the New Testament further, you know, there is a lot more insight about um, the simple gift of prophecy, which is uh, one of the spiritual gifts. Uh, and there is also insight about what we call as the grace gift of prophecy, where you know, people, some people, some individuals are called for the prophetic ministry, okay, uh, to be demonstrated through their lives. And the uh, the next one would be the office of a prophet. And this progression, I've touched upon this when we started our course. So I know that you have an idea already, but we will build on it. So now uh, coming to the gift of prophecy. And this is spoken of in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Uh, here, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church and he said, you know, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. You know, and then he goes on to uh, describing further and then, you know, uh, he enlists all the gifts which are a manifestation or let's say the work of the Holy Spirit. And in that list, you now he says, um, I'll read it from the beginning. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Okay, so note the list now. Word of wisdom. To another word of knowledge. Through the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles to another prophecy. So notice there, prophecy is part of the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So there are nine. And then he wraps it up by saying, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So basically what he's saying is, though there are diversities of these gifts, they are all from one source. That would be the Holy Spirit. And as we've noticed, the gift of prophecy is a part of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3, that describes this particular gift of prophecy. And you know, it says that this gift of prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. And we would say that this is, we call it the simple gift of prophecy. Okay. Uh, in other words, 
we understand it as the gift of prophecy that every believer can manifest okay or the simple gift of prophecy and what does the simple gift of prophecy do edification edification means building up so whenever there is a prophetic word it must build us up it must build our faith it must build our um uh, our fervor our uh, you know strengthen our relationship with god so that's what prophecy is intended to do so prophecy is for edification then there is exhortation exhortation is encouragement again in the things of god in the purpose of god uh, in our relationship with god a word of prophecy brings encouragement and comfort okay so in the same chapter there is a little deeper examination of these words you know comfort is to speak tenderly a uh, comfort is to uh, speak more closely so you know it's an encouragement but it's a deeper form of encouragement where where god is really lifting us up uh, and you know speaking his his uh, words of affirmation into our hearts so the simple gift of prophecy is supposed to do all of this for the people uh, and you know paul also added in first corinthians 14 verse 4 he said he who prophesies edifies the church now he also kind of contrasted this with tongues and he mentioned that when we speak in tongues what we are doing is we are building ourselves up so when i speak in tongues it's beneficial for me personally because again i'm talking about the simple tongues uh, uh the gift of simple uh, tongues is given for personal edification okay the way uh, in jude you know jude 21 where where we read that by uh, speaking in tongues we are strengthening our inner man so tongues is for personal edification but in this passage you know paul talks about prophecy being something that edifies the church it strengthens the church so we see here how the gifts of the spirit the manifestation of the genuine gifts of the spirit you know really causes the church to be built up in faith okay how it causes the church to thrive and a great example to look back on is the church of antioch when a team of prophets and teachers came from jerusalem to the church of antioch you know in in a very short period of time uh it, there there were more people who rose up who were hearing god's voice and you know they they were uh, functioning in the gift of prophecy so it strengthens the church and and it's really beautiful for us to be moving in the gift of prophecy so it's something to look forward to i know that uh, sometimes you know, uh, some of us might have that inhibition and think oh what will happen if everyone starts prophesying um it, it, what if you know people say all kinds of things we'll we'll talk about it later you know it's it's uh, it is going to take uh, that much effort to teach on prophecy and guide people in flowing uh, in this gift uh, but when we come to a place where people are flowing in the genuine gift of prophecy it is most beneficial for the local church as well as the body of christ so we need this and it, this is really great and we must look forward to it now moving forward from the simple gift of prophecy we talk about what is known as the grace gift of prophecy so the passage that we will refer to would be from romans chapter 12 romans chapter 12 verses 4 through 8 it lists out you know some of the other uh, uh, gifts that contribute to the building up of the body of christ so i'll read it for us in okay, this passage so romans 12 uh, from verse 4 to verse 8 for as we have many members in one body but all the members do not have the same function so we being many are one body in christ and individually members of one another 
having then gifts okay again the term use here is gifts but what kinds of gifts is he talking about gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us so earlier first corinthians 12 we talked about gifts of the holy spirit okay the manifestation of the holy spirit and there was a list of nine gifts over there but here he's talking about gifts according to the grace of god given to us let us use them so he says if prophecy there's a mention of prophecy here as well if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry let us use it in our ministry he who teaches in teaching he who exhorts in exhortation he who gives with liberality he who leads with diligence he who shows mercy with cheerfulness so there is prophesying mentioned here which is a grace gift of prophecy now what does this mean this simply means that while all believers can prophesy they can manifest the simple gift of prophecy which is to um, edify exhort and comfort uh, one another there are some believers who have been given the grace to minister prophetically so the manifestation of the prophetic is greater in their lives okay so we may also term it as oh this person has a prophetic ministry okay so some have the grace gift of prophecy where we see uh the the measure of the prophetic you know, in a greater manner in the work that they do now they might uh, be people who um uh, just release the prophetic word or they might be people who are engaging in a, a, a different kind of a ministry altogether but they are prophetic in some way let's say i'm just giving you an example uh, there is a writer okay, and god has given god has gifted this person to write and uh, you know they are writing songs they are writing uh, uh, you know uh, stories they are writing different things but every time you read what they are writing it's it's as if you're hearing from god so there is a grace right uh, upon the ministry of this individual and it is prophetic uh, you know in that sense so there are some people who might move uh, in the grace gift of prophecy and uh, the measure of the prophetic over their lives uh, would be certainly more than the simple gift of prophecy that we talked about earlier okay uh, yeah okay i think that uh, would suffice now the next progress part of the progression if you remember we said gift of prophecy grace gift and then the minister the office of a prophet so the the final uh, uh, i don't want to use the term level because uh, uh it it's really the calling of god you know where god positions us so there are people who are selected by god or chosen by god to be in the office of a prophet and our key passage for this is ephesians 4 we are very well aware uh, uh, you know from that passage uh, verses 11 through 13 how the lord jesus himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers for what for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ so further to build up god's people to build up god's house jesus has chosen some okay and then the fivefold ministry offices so some would be prophets that is the reason we say that everyone who prophesies is not a prophet Okay. they could just be moving in the simple gift of prophecy or they could have the grace gift of prophecy manifesting through their lives but 
the office of a prophet is uh, you know a greater calling and uh, one who is in this uh, position has greater responsibility okay uh, and the function of the office of a prophet i already told us that you know they would be somebody who uh, gives has governmental authority or governmental authority is given by christ okay to this individual and they release words that bring direction to uh, communities large parts of the body of christ or uh, the entire body of christ um, and uh, uh, you know to nations things like that so now some of us might ask the question how are these prophets different from the um, prophets in the early church or the new testament well we understand that there are different kinds of prophets okay so uh, obviously the church is built on the foundation uh, ephesians 2:20 says built on the foundation of apostles and prophets jesus christ himself being the cornerstone so the ch the early church okay had prophets whom we could refer to as um like fo founding prophets okay founding prophets and they had a mandate they had the calling of god to lay down certain standards so as we talked about um uh, acts 15 you know when they when they spoke and and declared that you don't need to follow uh, follow any jewish customs if you are born again and saved by believing in the work of the cross you are uh, you already have received salvation so they laid down those things and today the kind of prophets that we have in the body of christ their calling is different okay are they prophets the present day prophets whom we have yes they are also prophets but you would not find them meddling with the foundational truth of god's word so you see in the office of the prophet itself you know the function can be varied functions can be varied and that's how we understand the office of the prophet so we can't really um uh, say that the prophets of today have to be exactly like the prophets in the new testament okay but yes there are some of the a uh, common common uh, functions that we see that these prophets would prophesy um, uh, moves of god uh, they would prophesy uh, you know the mind of god to the larger body of christ they would go and speak to cities they would go and speak to nations you know things like this happen even today um, they can also bring insights to solve problems these could be problems within the body of christ or these could be problems um, you know which are external uh, and they could also bring a word to government okay uh, we've seen that in the old testament as well we saw how prophets were giving instructions uh, from god to kings and leaders and rulers so you know this is how we uh, understand this the the progression here of the prophetic anointing uh, which has been described in the new testament so um yeah so the the inference for us is that we can all we can all prophesy okay but given the way you know god calls and pours out his grace there would be some people uh who who have a prophetic ministry as such and there will be some who are called into the office of a prophet okay so i just want to pause here and ask us if you're doing okay if there are questions or you know something that you want to clarify at this point and then i can proceed i am at page 60 uh, yeah finish 66 so we are moving to page 67 now uh, but yeah anything that you want to ask or talk about
I couldn't understand the difference between uh, the grace of prophecy and other prophecies like uh, the fivefold uh, gift of prophecy. Because the Bible says that we receive everything by grace. How come there is uh, one prophecy that is grace of prophecy and how how do we receive the other ones if it's not by grace thank you pastor yeah thank you mangi a uh, good question so mangi the categorization that we have done is for our understanding so when i say the gift of prophecy, the simple gift of prophecy, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit, I am not eliminating the grace of God from it. No. God, we receive that by God's grace. And you notice, uh, when we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, charismata, the, the term, the gift, it is a gift. We do nothing to earn a gift. On my birthday, if somebody gives me a very expensive, um, you know, a watch or a cell phone or even flowers, I did nothing to get it. It is their love for me. It's grace. They chose to give that to me. So what do I do with the gift? I say thank you and I just receive it. So is that gift, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, grace or not? Very much. Because it's not based on my performance. It's based on? what Jesus has done on the cross. So point I'm making is grace is everywhere. Grace is in all the three, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, grace, the simple gift, the grace gift and the prophetic office. It's just for our understanding that we are calling the uh, uh, level, okay, I'll just say level, higher than the simple gift of prophecy. We're calling it grace gift of prophecy. Do you understand? It's a greater measure of the prophetic anointing. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Okay, it, it, it's cleared your doubt, your confusion? Uh, yes, it did. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, yes, Kennedy, please go ahead. Thank you. I think we are reading from the same cup here with my brother Manji. The question is related. They are similar. <laughs> okay, okay. So, great. Thank you, so thank you Pastor Manji. Yeah. All right. Thank you, uh, Kennedy. Uh, say, please go ahead. Your turn. Yes, yes Pastor. Um, just in line with the question, I would just like to confirm. C could we say that the simple gift of prophecy, you know, only does um, this to the believer, edifying the believer, comforting the believer, and encouraging the believer? Whereas when it comes to the prophetic office, the person who is called to the so as a prophet, is that beyond just edifying, beyond just comforting, beyond just encouraging, there's revelation that comes with the prophecy. So, so that whenever he prophesies, he's not just edifying, he's not just encouraging. Things are being revealed, you know, word of wisdom, word of knowledge incorporated into his prophecy. I don't know if that would be right to say. Uh Yes, uh, say so. You put it beautifully. Um, with the office of a prophet, there comes greater revelation, um, and yeah, to a certain extent, you could say that the other gifts also, um, you know, flow together. But we, you mentioned the other gifts, but we'll come to that later. Uh, say, uh, but the part that you said about greater revelation—that's true. Okay, so as you progress, there is a greater revelation, greater impartation of the anointing. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Say. Yes, uh, yes Shri Kumar, you have something to add? Yeah, I have a question, Prof. Oh, sorry, Pastor. Hmm. Um, my question is, um, when uh, uh, the gift of prophecy, uh, it's a gift, and um, 
and then um, as it is written in Romans um, 12 for it that uh, let us use if the prophecy the prophecy in proportion to our faith so I just want to know that when it is a gift as you said that somebody uh, g uh, give you a gift uh, you know you will receive it with thanks so you don't need any faith on that so you can use it the way how but in that case then why that uh, that uh, proportion of uh, you know the faith is needed or um, uh, what is that uh, uh, that uh, you know the interconnection of faith and the gift in that in that area. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Shri Kumar. As you have rightly pointed out, uh, also the scripture reference Romans twelve four uh, to use the gift, you know, in uh, proportion to the faith that one has. The same answer that I gave Mangi. You know, just because something. Um, you, you don't mention the word grace there. The simple gift of prophecy is not devoid of grace. So similarly, when it comes to the operation of the prophetic at any level, though it's not mentioned, it is, uh, we do call it grace. Uh, but, you know, it has to, it, it is activated by faith, Shri Kumar. It's like salvation. You know, there is something called as saving uh, faith. So it's only when the individual has that faith that you even receive the gift of salvation. You can't receive the gift of salvation without uh, that level of faith, okay, saving faith. So in the same way, for the operation of the gifts of the spirit, we do require faith. Though it is a gift, if there is no faith, it will not function. And we are going to study about this. The now, uh, I, I'll just uh, put it, uh, I'll just share something basic right now. See, we need a, we need a, uh, if you want to say a basic amount of faith to receive the gift. And that's how it is. But as we, once we receive it, you know, how we use the gift depends on our faith level. So, all the gifts, in fact, are operational based on our faith. So as an individual, once I have received the gift of prophecy, if I keep increasing in my level of faith, the manifestation of that gift in my life will keep increasing, get, keep getting better. Okay. So uh, though we don't mention it, yes, the operation of the gifts of the spirit is based on our faith. We cannot um, disconnect the two. So just because we call it a gift, we must not misunderstand that there is, uh, you know, faith is not required. So I, I hope it makes sense to you. I yeah, kind of you. like no, made no, a no, whole jumble yeah. of my words. <laughs> I'm only thinking, what did I say? <laughs> yeah. So no, thank you, Pastor. You, you, you said it correctly. Thank you. Okay, great. Yes, yes, Shikumar. Thank you for that. So, yeah, faith is definitely needed. And the greater faith we develop, the, the, the smoother the flow of the anointing. You know, one of the ways that we build faith is through the word, isn't it? Now, all of us just taking time in God's word about the gift of prophecy will cause our faith to rise and thereby a greater manifestation of the prophetic gift through our lives. Okay. So that's how it would work. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. Good uh, pertinent questions. We'll move forward. So I'm on page 67 now. Yeah. The gifts of the spirit and the prophetic. Now, say touched on this a little bit, uh, uh, but I wanted to bring in... Um, uh, you know, more clarity. So when we talk about the prophetic um, and the gifts of, of the spirit, there are four gifts that we list from the list that I mentioned earlier, 1 Corinthians 12. There are four gifts which for the sake of our convenience and our understanding, we classify under the prophetic anointing. Now, don't get too technical. 
because the point is not technicality the point is just ease of understanding okay so uh now these four gifts you know uh they may flow together maybe two happen together or three happen together all four happen together a point is not to figure out okay just now whatever a particular individual said is it gift one gift two gift three gift four it doesn't matter as long as there has been a manifestation of the spirit through the gifts and it has built up the body of christ or built up another believer so i uh, our motive our focus is only that you know god is glorified people are blessed okay so that's the whole point but for our understanding whenever we talk about the prophetic anointing the gifts that we refer to are what we also known call as the revelatory gifts so the revelatory gifts would be word of wisdom word of wisdom means and again these gifts are not an acquired skill okay instead they are um you know it's like a grace which is imparted so you we can't train anyone in developing uh, you know this 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 particular skill of having the word of wisdom or having the uh, word of knowledge or things like that so it it comes from god and we'll look at the examples later so one would be the a uh, gift of the word of wisdom word of wisdom is being able to provide guidance direction solution to somebody's problem okay not out of our logic but you know while we're praying for someone you suddenly it just comes to you you're like i see this 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 happening like solomon you remember uh, but again you know solomon you could say that uh, some extent of acquired knowledge and all he had but we are primarily talking about the wisdom that's imparted by the spirit of god to us in those moments where you don't even know what to say but then here you are providing a solution or a direction and it works out so that is the word of wisdom so basically it's a solution then the gift of the word of knowledge word of knowledge is to have a piece of information which you you know normally you can't have because you don't know a certain person but when you're praying for them you're suddenly saying things like you know i i see that you have done this or you've done that you went here you went there it's coming from god okay so that is a word of knowledge that is information okay having supernatural information the third one is the discerning of spirits discerning of spirits is to have uh, uh you know like have a sense of what kind of spirit you're dealing with if it's a human being like jesus looked at nathaniel and said here is a man without any guile or here's a righteous man how do you know jesus or jesus looked at peter and said you are rock but you look at the life of peter and you're like look at this individual you know he is not making firm decisions he did not uh, uh, stay faithful to uh, jesus uh, at the time of his crucifixion but then you see the life that he led after he was filled with the holy spirit you know he became one of those solid rocks of the early church but jesus discerned it earlier and he said you are simon you are cephas you know you are the rock so discerning of spirits and this can also be operational when it comes to uh, you know dealing with demon spirits and ministering deliverance when you're ministering you don't know what kind of spirits are binding an individual but by the holy spirit through the operation of the gifts of the spirit we recognize oh okay this is a spirit of fear i come against you spirit of fear in the name of jesus i take authority i cast you out i command you to come out of this person in the name of jesus so the discerning of spirits and notice all these are revelatory or they bring some sort of an understanding to us outside of our natural realm okay so they are revelatory gifts and in addition to that we add the gift of prophecy all four of these are revelatory gifts and you know it's it's a like a package okay uh, in the prophetic realm that uh, help us manifest 
the work of God. Okay, uh, we've run out of time. I'll have to stop right here, but we'll pick up from this uh, tomorrow. I request someone to please close with a word of prayer, please. Okay, anyone who can. Okay, Mangi, would you be able to? Oh, oh sorry, Shikha. Okay, can I pray? Yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Go ahead, Shikha. Precious, precious Father, we thank you and praise you, Father God. We humble ourselves and, Father God, we pray that every word what we received, oh, Father God, let it deeply rooted in our heart, oh God. We pray that, Father, that everything what we learn today, each one of us, oh God, let it be protected under the blood of Jesus. And we pray that, Father, let we grow in this gift, oh Father God, so that we can edify the church. We can able to, Lord, build the kingdom. We can use this gift as a tool, as a weapon. Lord Master, to build the church, to build the nation, build the city. Lord Master, to establish the power and the glory of the kingdom of God in the nations of Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your anointed servant. Thank you, Father God. We ask you, strengthen her more so that she can be used powerfully for your kingdom, O oh God. Thank you for everything what you reveal to us, O oh God, through the power of the Holy Spirit. I give you all the glory, honor, and praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shri Kumar. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day. We'll meet tomorrow again in class. Take care. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhakar. Thank you, everyone.